What's up everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Super excited about today's artist series, Adam Jones of Tool. If you've ever seen Tool live, there's been a few times when I've seen him live, I saw Maynard stand behind a screen the whole time. And I think it's because he didn't really want to stand out from the band. Uh, when you think of Tool, they're one cohesive unit. And that's great because even though individually they're all amazing musicians, when they get together, it's just something much bigger than all of them. So what's cool is that Adam Jones is playing as that way as well. A lot of the things he does, it's not like he comes out in shreds and does this epic solo, but he plays for the purpose of the band and the atmosphere that he brings to it is basically what Tool is all about. Okay, so the idea of bringing your part and creating something bigger, okay? So today there's a lot of weird things that we have to do. There's a talk box, there's some feedback stuff. So I had a lot of toys to play with for this particular artist series. Let's get right into it and uh, have fun. Sometimes when you're the only guitar player in the band, you have to expand yourself sonically. And since they do drop D tuning, what Adam's really good at doing is doing what I call the extended drop D chord. And that's if you go like this, let's just play the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings in drop D, it'll sound like this. Okay, that's a common sound. Now, if you were to act like you're playing a D major chord like this, except we do not hit the first string. So we're going to have this and we're going to have this. You're going to get this extended drop D sound. Or you can also use these two fingers. All right. So we're basically playing third string, second fret, second string, third fret. Now, if you move it up, we bar across just like you would do if you normally did drop D stuff. But we're going to bring that idea with our with our fingers. So we're going to use the ring finger and the pinky. We get a much bigger sound than if we just did the low strings. The eeriness of Tool can be summed up. Not really summed up, but a big part of it can be summed up in this next technique. Let's do the uh, good old unison bends. We're gonna do it here on the second and third strings. We're just gonna go uh, seventh fret and fifth fret. What I want you to do is I want you to bend that third string up a whole step while keeping that first finger note where it is. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, did you hear when the notes started getting closer together, there was this weird rubbing thing that kind of bounces? frequencies fighting each other. So if you play with that a little bit, go up to unison, let it drop a little bit and hear the speed of it changing a little bit. If you go too far, it gets faster and faster and then it goes away. Changes, okay? So you wanna really play with that, that unison and then just a little bit below. Very eerie sound, and you can actually add, uh, we're gonna do this for the next technique, but you can add some effects to it to get some even crazier sounds. Okay, let's do that unison bed now, but we're gonna add a wah pedal to it. So let's just engage that real quick. And hear the difference, it's a lot more extreme. So if you just do regular unison bends without the wah. Great sound, add some wah to it. It's pretty extreme. Now, I hesitated on doing this because my ear is still healing and it's really loud to use, but we're gonna use the talk box for a second. And I hate using talk boxes because you gotta stick a hose in your face. But I'm just gonna use the talk box really quick, do that so you can hear how he also uses that. So I'm too lazy to hook this up to a uh, mic stand, so I'm just gonna hold it with my teeth, hope for the best. Here we go. Cool sound, I can feel my skull rattling when I do this. I don't know how people do talk box for extended periods of time. How do you do it, Peter Frampton? Okay, let's move on. This is so fun to do if you're just sort of chilling and you wanna play some laid back kind of uh, exotic sounds. Play the open D string. I added a little bit of chorus to the sound. And over the top of it, let's go ahead and play some higher notes on the G string. So we're gonna basically use the D string as a pedal tone.
Yeah. See, just by moving around a little bit, you get some great sounds. It's a great way to hear modes as well. If you ever want to play like certain modes over the top of an open string, that's just a little side hint for you. You can really hear the sound of it. Okay, let's keep going on this a little bit. Start with like a droning D. Best part of doing D is you could jump to the low D now because we're in drop D and then really thicken it up. Or just go ahead and play through all the fat strings. I personally like the sound of a single D and then the high note. But if you add all the other strings, it really builds it up to a bigger sound. So go ahead and feel free to use either one. Now this might sound lame, but I'm gonna play riffs that are in the style of Tool. I'm not gonna teach exact Tool riffs. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that nowadays, but I'm gonna go ahead and play something similar, but the technique is really what I'm focusing on, okay? It's not how to play the riff today. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get used to these, I call them clickety clicks, it's a really stupid name for it, but it's where you just mute the string with both hands and then you pick like this. So you could either do palm muting or you could do totally dead muting. Okay, so add that to a riff and you get some great rhythmic feel to it that you might not have had if you didn't do this. I have a feeling Adam's a drummer as well. Just the way that he plays, it's very drummer-like. Okay, so we get something like this. Hear that? It's, very, it's a subtle way of muting, but it adds to the rhythm. If you overdo it and you start to do like real heavy Metallica type muting, it doesn't quite sound right. It's still cool, but it's not the same. It doesn't have that tool feel to it. Now there's a lot of advantages to doing drop D. One is that you have two D strings now. So whatever you do on the low D string, you could easily just move over to the actual D string and play the same frets and you get the same riff, just an octave higher. It's a fun thing to do if you're playing riffs and you want to change it up a little bit. So let's see you go like this. You get the idea. Now don't forget, if you're using a Les Paul like he does, you have access to two volume knobs. So if you turn down one of your pickups, this suddenly becomes an on-off switch. And this isn't a lot of my videos, but some people don't really take advantage of it. It's a really great way to just cut your guitar sound off if you're on stage and you're getting too much maybe feedback or something. And you can start to do tool slash Tom Morello type effects. You know, that kind of stuff where you're just turning, turning it on so this becomes a kill switch. Very cool. And if you ever use feedback, uh, like if you hold your guitar up to your amp and it starts feeding back and you do it, it's another cool sound. So we'll get into feedback towards the end of this, but just keep that in mind, okay? There's a lot of creepy sounds, just like in the band Korn. You know, they all have these dissonant, scary things happen. And if you use a slide, you can get very close to a lot of the things Adam does. If you go beyond the fretboard, you could get some amazing, crazy sounds. I used to call this the I think it was the dove sound or something. But if you just go up high, if you have a slide, just bring it up past the fretboard and see how high you can get it. I added a little bit of delay and a little bit of chorus to that. But if you're on your treble pickup way back here, the bridge pickup, you should be able to slide all the way up to that pickup and make sounds up high. If you go to your front pickup, you get to about here and it dies out. Strange. So it totally changes. But treble pickup, you have more headroom if you have your volume up. It's also a little bit of welcome to the jungle sound there. There's many ways to enhance a riff, especially if it's a low string open pull off riff like this. One great way to do it, let's get rid of the delay here. 
<laughs> One way to do this is to use pinch harmonics on a low string. You get a great song with it. And I don't know if everyone knows this, but if you take your picking hand and move it up and down the string, you get different harmonics. It's that concept. Uh, Kirk Hammett actually uses it in one song for Garage Days. I forgot which one it is. Garage Days Revisited, Re-Revisited or something. Okay, so anyways, we get this. But if I move up... And if you don't know how to do artificial harmonics, uh, check it out on our website. I go into this big in-depth way I do it. I use the side of my thumb knuckle. It's a little bit different sometimes than what other people teach it with. A lot of people say just scrape your thumb, uh, the side of your thumb with it. But I really incorporate part of your thumb that sticks out so it's really easy to get these if you use this technique. And then you can sort of use both because you teeter-totter between the two techniques. <laughs> I love the sound of add nine chords. And when you do a typical power chord, if you just reach up with your pinky, you get that. It's a very police sound. But with distortion and drop D, it's really easy to do this on the low strings. All you have to do is bar across like you do for drop D anyway, and then just go to the D string, the fourth string, and play two frets higher. You get this sound. <laughs> Sound familiar? Without it, with it. Incorporate that, it really adds another element to the sound. Adding to the creepy factor, let's do that tearing sound that they do quite a bit. Uh, when I first got into Tool, it's one of the first things I noticed were all the weird sounds they were using. I heard they did strange things like they threw a piano off the side of a building and, and <laughs> mic'd it up and, and played it back in reverse or something. And uh, I remember I think one of the band members said they would never do that again because they saw how intricate a piano was. And he fe actually felt bad seeing that they destroyed this work of art, you know. But one of the cool sounds is this ripping sound. And all it is is a pick scrape with a little delay on it, and you get this. It's kind of cool. I should have put that on my uh, sound effects, creepiest sound effects uh, video, but I didn't really think about it. But maybe I did. I can't remember now. But it's the slow ripping pick scrape. It's not the typical, you know, kind of cool thing like that, but it's just real slow and you take advantage of the wrapping of the string. Don't forget the delay too. Adding a little delay makes it even better. A very subtle technique, but very powerful at the same time. Once again, not doing the exact riff, but one like it. Take advantage of the string itself. Dimebag Daryl does this great in uh, Mouth for War. This is a single string version of that idea where you slide up the string and you end up at the 12th fret and do a pull off. I wonder if you can play that without picking. Oop, shut the delay off. <laughs> That's a riff you could do without picking. That's kind of cool. Okay, got pretty close to the riff on that one. But you get the idea. Using a slide as a technique within a riff, very interesting sounding and fun to play. Okay, odd times are all over Tool songs, just like Rush songs and Dream Theater. You get this really awesome idea of an odd time that keeps rotating and repeating. Uh, once again, not the exact riff, but we get this kind of thing happening. So the way I count that, I count it in fives. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's really hard to do at the same time. So that idea of five is really interesting. And then you keep repeating it. It just sounds like this circle happening. Okay, let's stay with this idea. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same riff. We're going to go to what I call extreme muting. So Adam's really good at doing open riffs and then muting them really tight with palm muting. So the side of your palm, side of your hand, it's not really palm muting. It's funny they call it that. Side of the hand muting, it's not as catchy. That's probably why they don't call it that. Karate chop the old strings right by the bridge and do the same riff. It's going to sound like this. Does 
Does that just sound like Tool? So from open to totally close. Remember, as a guitar player, one of the biggest things you have control over are the dynamics of your of your notes. So how hard and soft you play them, in this case, how choppy, like staccato versus open you play them. Now let's talk about morphing. So if I took that same riff and I slowly went from the choking muting to open, it would sound like this. So usually right before they go to a chorus, he opens it up like that. It's a very cool effect and it's powerful because it makes you feel like something's coming up, kind of like when a drummer splashes cymbals and then boom, comes in with a big hit, same concept. You can also do this with a wah, one of my favorite things to do. So let's do the wah version of this. Okay, you get the idea. I thought I'd come up with this trick a long time ago, but then all of a sudden I heard him do it. So he beat me to the punch and I'm sure someone else beat him to the punch. It's a great trick where you take your, it's, I shouldn't call it a trick, it's a technique, where you play an open string and you just trem pick it. I like to trem pick by the bridge so you get this real kind of Middle Eastern sound like a. <laughs> It's a great sound, a little delay going on too. After you do that, we're gonna actually just use our fretting hand and hammer down on certain notes. And I'm just gonna hammer on the low string for this one, so it's gonna sound like this. Okay, I'll add the effect in post-production, so I just hope it's there the right way. But we're gonna take a riff and I'm gonna pan the delay. I'm gonna add a delay to the riff. Uh, after two times playing it and then the delay is going to appear in one of the ears I think it's going to be the left channel and what you're going to do is you're going to hear how it plays off of the original riff And you get this really great circular sound. It's like the notes are harmonizing with each other. It's a really cool thing So here's what we have Once again, not the real riff, but close to it so you get the idea. Isn't that crazy how it starts to play against itself in a really great way? Now you can do this just by adding a delay on stage. It'd be a mono type situation where you would just hear it go with, along with it. But in the stereo world, if you're wearing earbuds or if you're in front of two speakers, you could hear it bouncing back and forth, which is even cooler. Now, if you want to make a solo really intense, sometimes you just have to add more to it and, you know, make it a little more aggressive. A good way to do this to cover some space is to actually just tremolo pick through a solo. So in this one case, it's really a great sound, it opens it up quite a bit. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> So don't forget, sometimes you gotta go back to the basic uh, techniques, such as tremolo picking, and then it, you can add it to a creative situation and just take up more space. As a single guitar player, like I keep saying, you gotta be able to do that. Uh, a lot of great single guitar players just find ways to cover a lot of space, and this is one of the tricks. Okay, so this next technique, it's kind of tricky, but what we're gonna do is, it's like we're playing drums with our left hand. So I'm gonna hit an open string and I'm gonna hammer on the third fret and then the fifth fret. And we're gonna see if we can keep that going on three strings, go back and forth, start slow. Start to speed it up and mute it. Okay, we gotta actually go faster than that, but don't go until, until you can get at least that speed, don't try to go even faster, okay? So maybe this speed for a while. It helps to really exaggerate it too, to accent your fingers, really slam them down at first. Don't hurt your hand, but just make it real apparent that that's, you tell your brain that's what you want to happen. Okay, over time, add the mutes and speed it up. Okay, props to Ben Eller for getting this right when he was teaching it on his channel. Be sure to check him out, he's awesome. Uh, it's the finger drag technique. And it's a lot like the other one where it really requires you to be like a drummer with your left hand or your, your fretting hand, depending on which hand you play. 
like that, real time-based stuff. Timing, it's like playing drums with your hands, like I keep saying. Well, this one's a little different in that we're not gonna be hammering things down, but we're gonna be dragging to create a certain rhythm. So I like to go like this first. I like to go three, I'll just say fret numbers, to open, and we're gonna do a pull off like this. Okay, that's the first step. Just make sure you can do that first. We're gonna do extreme palm muting again. Okay, then all you have to do is add something after the pull off, and it's gonna fill in the space a little bit more and add another element of trickiness to it. So we get this. Okay, so it's a little weird, but it's just creating this other pull off sound. Now keep the right hand going like it was going now. That's just a mean sound, I love it. I thought at first it was just pull-offs, like. You know, that's what a lot of guitar players would think, you know, even it was tabbed out that way as well. But when you get this roll happening, it just feels right when you play it. I love using the guitar to create different types of instrument sounds. And one sound that I always love is the sound of a cello. And sometimes I would do volume swells. That's where you take the volume and you, in this example, hammer on a note and then turn up your volume at the same time. Don't turn the volume up too soon, otherwise you hear the hammer. You don't want to hear the attack. Just the buildup. That sounds like a synth, doesn't it? I have a little bit of chorus too. So what Adam does really well is he starts to do these higher, with distortion by the way too, these higher notes as swells. a cello effect I would call it and uh, you've heard a lot of guitar players do this from Eddie Van Halen to Ingve Malmsteen there's just a really cool uh, it's a really cool technique to get down and you can use it in a lot of different situations okay disclaimer for this last technique it's more of a sound effect technique it's where you hold your guitar in front of your speakers the disclaimer is there's gonna be lots of loud volume lots of feedback so make sure you're wearing earplugs I'm wearing these earbuds so I'm okay but I'm just gonna show you how holding your guitar in front of a speaker at a loud volume can produce crazy feedback, just weird sounds. And you could start to utilize that in the backgrounds of things. So sometimes when there's a space in a tool song, you'll hear all this craziness going on. And uh, the feedback technique is a big thing that he uses. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that was fun for you guys, as much fun as it was for me to make. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more artist series in the future, but this is one of my favorite ones to, to record. So hopefully you like it, and I'll catch you at the next one, okay? Hopefully some of these techniques can help you with your own playing, like I always say. Be sure to implement them and make them your own if you can. Okay guys, take care, bye.